Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. Joining me today is our aquatic nuisance species coordinator, Jessica Howell. Jessica, what exactly is ANS, or aquatic nuisance species? An aquatic nuisance species is a non-native species, so it's not supposed to be here, uh, that was introduced either through uh, human transfer or through natural pathways. And it usually causes some kind of ecological, social, or economic harm. So basically, it's something that's not supposed to be here that does some kind of damage. Okay, so you, know, you kind of answer this question, but why should we be concerned about ANS? Right, so we should care about ANS because these are species that usually cause some kind of significant harm. They either inter, uh, interrupt natural food webs or cause some other kind of ecological harm, or they can be very costly economic-wise, and a lot of times they're um, impossible to remove once they've been introduced. Okay, do we have any in North Dakota? We do, we have five species of ANS in North Dakota. Common carp, which were introduced long ago and are found in many waters in North Dakota. We've got curly leaf pondweed, which is primarily in the Missouri River system and a few isolated lakes around the state. We have one population of silver carp, one population of Eurasian water milfoil, and in the Red River, we also have zebra mussels. Okay, how did they get here? Right, so they come in through different pathways. Um, and for us, primarily they've come in um, not through human movement. Um, common carp and Eurasian water milfoil were spread by humans, we know that much. Some of the isolated populations of curly leaf were also spread by humans. But curly leaf pondweed in the Missouri River system came down through that system um, <coughs> from populations that are already in Montana. Same with zebra mussels, they came from Minnesota populations that came downstream. And then the silver carp moved upstream during flooding uh, from South Dakota. Okay, what can we do to stop the spreading of ANS? So the main things that we recommend are to clean, drain, and dry all equipment every time you use it. And what that entails is when you're at a boat ramp or some kind of water access site, make sure that you're really taking the time to leave anything that came from the lake at the lake or river. And what that basically entails is inspecting your equipment, removing any vegetation that may be present, any attached organisms, uh, draining all water, and if possible, remove excess mud. And the reason we recommend mud, if you, if you can do it, um, is that mud can harbor organisms or plant seeds. So we really recommend a thorough cleaning um, and draining at the water body, and that includes things like waders, fishing equipment, duck decoys, boats, trailers, and um, pretty much anything that might have those organisms on there. Okay, and we've added several laws here in the last few years to uh, help to prevent the spread of ANS. Right, and the clean and drain portions of those are covered in our laws. Um, and so, you know, in North Dakota, it's illegal to bring weeds into the state. It's illegal to bring bait into the state because we are concerned about what species may be coming in. In fact, in the past couple years, or excuse me, in the past year, we've had a, a few instances where wardens have been finding illegal bait in the state, and that is certainly a concern that they might get released and cause new populations of species we don't want. Um, <coughs> it's also, you know, a law as of 2016 to pull your drain plug and leave that out during transport. Um, and we've also had a, a drain law on, on the books for some time. One thing we don't have as a law, but we do recommend is that dry portion of it. And so after you've left, your, uh, left the lake and you've already done the clean and drain portion and followed North Dakota law, we do recommend that you let your equipment dry completely. And that just helps kill anything that might still be present. Um, and if you can't dry it completely, we do recommend a hot water wash. One thing you can do is hot tap water is about 120 degrees. If you clean your equipment for 10 minutes with hot tap water type water, uh, that will kill anything that's on there as well. Um, if you can get access to hotter water, um, 140 degrees for 10 seconds of contact is, is recommended. Last summer you had crews at several boat ramps around the state uh, showing people how to properly clean their boats. Are you gonna do that again this summer? We are. We hire four students uh, to conduct boater surveys and inspections. And so they travel around the state. Uh, they are based out of Devil's Lake and Valley City, but they travel as far as Sakakawi and Oahe as well. Um, <clears throat> and basically what we're trying to do is conduct some surveys so we get an idea of what boaters are already doing and what they already know about aquatic nuisance species. Um, but then we also do an inspection. And this is an opportunity for us to show boaters how to comply with our regulations as well. So we'll walk 
the owner, if they're interested, will walk them around the boat and show them areas where they should be looking for vegetation, areas where they need to drain, uh, and, and ways that they need to comply with our regulations as well. A lot of good information, Jessica. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. For more information about aquatic nuisance species, go to the Game of Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Aquatic Nuisance Species Coordinator Jessica Howell and the rest of the staff here at the Game of Fish Department, thanks for joining us this week for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.